Uh, Saturday's topic today is going to be discussing domestic violence, human trafficking, the stat of COVID-19. How is that being affecting everything? So we have our panelists, uh, Wanda yeah. Petty, a U.S. Army yeah. veteran and known as Sista Soldier, uh, President and CEO this, uh, of uh, She That Inspire, and <laughs> Jennifer Foxworthy, U.S. Navy air crew veteran and post uh, domestic violence driver, a victim's advocate. Hello, welcome to the show. And then Cliff, uh, I know you're there, our governor of talk radio. We are ready uh, to hear your words of wisdom as usual. And am, uh, you can lead it off with Jennifer or with Wanda. I'm so pleased to have them both. Uh, this is a great show. Uh, and Dr. Arnold, always a pleasure to uh, have you as the co-host. Appreciate you. You know that. Yes, sir. And uh, as you know, our executive producer, yes. Glenda, Glenda Smith. Yes, she is uh, wonderful. She is standing in the wings, uh, always over a watchful eye over us. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Without a doubt. But this is topic uh, of domestic media violence. Media producer, Manny Cortazari, and yes. as you mentioned, uh, our assistant uh, digital yes. media producer, Titus Williams. Yeah, you were talking and about I'm, these folks. Sister Soldier, this is a great thing. I want to mention again, you've, we've mentioned it, but it needs to be mentioned again, Doc, and you're right on that. Yesterday was National Purple Heart Day. Yes, I yes. can remember years ago when people used to hang up yes. during wars, they used to hang up uh, yes. things in the windows if they yes. had had uh, family members who had been injured or maybe killed. Yes, yes. But they would put in the window... Uh, Doc, they would put in the window actually showing that, you know, they had somebody who had served, which I thought. Yes. And yeah. that, that recognition is so, so important, especially in a time like now when we are oh, facing sure. so many different uh, controversial issues. And, right, you, know, right. some, some, you know, also, you know, we are facing things that uh, both uh, Wanda and Jennifer know really a lot about is the domestic violence and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. and how this COVID-19 is really impacting those issues oh my goodness, and the statistics. Yes. So, Jennifer, um, why don't you lead us and off? Let me just say this up before we do that. I just yes. want to mention okay. uh, Wanda Petty, U.S. Army veteran, yes. known as Sister Soldier. Yes. Uh, there's so much that she has done, yes. and I have seen her in so many different places. She's in uh, publications. Yes. <laughs> uh, Wanda just does all kinds of uh, great things. Very proud of her. And absolutely. An Army veteran. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. And then Jennifer Foxworth, the U.S. Navy yeah. air crew veteran. Yes. And, and that's, a, that's a quite of a history. <laughs> damn right. Yes, thank you. And post domestic violence driver. Yes. Uh, victims advocate. We've got some ladies who, uh, yeah. they, they know what they're doing. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. so. So, Wanda, why don't you tell us what, what's going on with this whole issue? Um, how are we, you know, uh, facing this issue now in COVID-19? Well, thanks again for being on the show. It's always a pleasure. Um, I, I really wanted to touch bases with this because um, I, I see how it's really started mm -hmm. to impact the women in the military as well as I'm sure that it's in, impacting women all around the world with yes. the way COVID has and campus everybody in their homes. And so we're looking at the pandemic, the invisible pandemic is what it's known as, along with uh, trafficking. Mm -hmm. And we're, there were, it's been an increase, such an increase of trafficking, sex, sexual trafficking for women and young girls during this time frame because of the financial shortage in many families. And mm -hmm. so... We really wanted to bring awareness to this issue, to bring resources to women and to give them hope and to let them know that we are, we are mm -hmm. watching and to give them some insight as well as uh, the community so that we could keep an eye out to be able to uh, call for help for these women and these children who are being, um, and men as well, uh, mm -hmm. who are being um uh, utilized in this manner and feel hopeless. Uh, the LBGT, um, um, LGTB community is also being affected because people are more 
locked in now. And so when they don't have their normal fix, such as drugs or alcohol or or not being busy, occupied with something more positive, things go south, they go inward. And so when, when people go inward, sometimes what's in them come out. And it's being, it's being affected, affecting others within their household and people who are mm-hmm. feeling like they are um, hopeless and have no other situation, no other way to get out. And it's a terrible feeling. So Jennifer mm-hmm. specializes in this, and I really wanted to bring her, her voice to the subject matter. And with that, I'm going to let her um, go ahead and say what she has to say. Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. Great. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me on as a guest once again. um, It's absolutely a pleasure, but I'm grateful that you guys are bringing awareness to domestic violence and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like Wanda said, they are invisible pandemics. COVID-19 is not the only pandemic, and I started, you know, using that as a hashtag on many of my posts when I bring awareness. Um, They both... It's like COVID-19 has been a perfect storm. So for domestic violence, uh, a victim who is with uh, their abuser, there's already um, the the stress of the emotional, the physical, the mental, because it comes in so many forms. Mm -hmm. But when a person loses their job or or laid off and the financial and economical uh, factors it amplifies the situation of, you know, of an already uncertain um, problem. And so, yes, COVID-19 has escalated the cycle of abuse for many people. So I was going over the, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, and in March, their, their reports, the calls of reports had decreased. Um, from March 2019, but we understood now your victim is in a close proximity. They may not have the outlet to reach out for help to the advocates, and that was what was driving the the decrease in numbers. Now that things are kind of loosening up, they're starting to see the calls increase again, yes. but again, it's that safety. It's that you know what can a victim do when they are they can't get away maybe their job might have been the only source of um having a break from the abusive behavior yes and not having that job that outlet mm-hmm. just made it all that more um difficult in addition, I would like to say, um, then if the, the shelters were full, because you had a lot of the homeless coming out of the woods and uh, occupying the shelters, and then with the virus, you know, the victims would have to determine is it safe to, if they go to a shelter, they may contact the virus. So do you stay and put up with it, or do you chance it? and contact the virus yeah that's a really that's a very dire picture you're painting yeah um you know those things that have happened and you know and plus you know i I was thinking when you were saying that you know this decrease since march 19th but here we are we're sitting in a time period where we don't know where this is going and there may be a secondary pandemic wave and especially in the fall and the winter months uh you know ahead so, you know, this, this head that uh, has reared itself, you know, after uh, March 19th may actually submerge again, as far as we know. And we need to be having some planning, it sounds like, uh, to deal with that because it's actually more depressing in the winter months and when people are locked in and they can't get out at all, right? Absolutely. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's very true. So what is the method of trying to alleviate the problems that you are dealing with every day? I would encourage victims to uh, stay encouraged. And when there's an opportunity to reach out, you know, uh, to do so, um, 
or, you know, if their life is truly in dire, you know, call the police. I know, unfortunately, you have people, uh, the political situation going on right now where people want to defund the police and they think that putting social workers in the place of police for domestic violence situations is the solution, but it truly isn't because the most dangerous time is when a cop goes to the house of an abusive situation. They don't know what they're going to walk into. And even though that victim may have called the police because they want the abuse to stop, they they may turn on the police because they don't want that victim, they don't want that abuser to go to jail. So it's important for um, victims to find ways for self-care and to reduce or es- de-escalate the situation. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's, you know, shutting themselves in the bathroom and meditating. Um, it's a matter of self uh self-preservation until they're in an opportunity to get help. You know, it's really interesting because when you were saying that, I was just thinking, you know, when we come to, to, to private property, uh, because we're a you know, capitalistic country and that kind of thing, so we look at, you know, material possessions and that kind of thing. And when it comes to that, uh, and when we come, it comes to terrorism and the destruction of property, we say, see something, do something. Is there a responsibility for all of us to be say something and, uh, you know, if we see something, say something or do something about it, you know, to report it or to um, be more in tune to that, uh, you know, both the, the domestic violence and the trafficking. Absolutely. I mean, as human beings or Christians or just people with a heart that cares, you have to put yourself in that situation. Would If it was your child, would you want somebody to... Uh, speak up and speak out. And you can call the hotlines and or the uh, non-emergency number uh, or 911 and make an anonymous report or do a wealth or ask to do a welfare check. There's nothing wrong with that. And matter of fact, I would encourage those with neighborhood watches to bring the police in, to bring crisis center advocates into the neighborhood watch meetings to inform um, the residents of what they can do and should do if they hear the screams, if they hear the commotion, the furniture breaking, the, you know, uh, if it spills out into the streets. It's, um, it's something that we can't ignore because then it, if a person perishes or it's that guilt and shame that they're going to have to live with especially if that person dies and they just chose to look the other way. Um, mm. I wanted to mention that the domestic violence, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-7233. And they actually do have a chat um, or a text uh, system. And you can text love is to one eight six six. Three three one nine four seven four. So, National Domestic Violence Hotline. They have they have now come up with a text feature because of COVID nineteen and victims not being able to call. That is fantastic. Um, it is. Give us that number again. National yes. Domestic Hotline. What is that? The national to call. It's one eight hundred seven nine nine. Seven two three three, um, and then they have the chat or text, and it's love is L O V E I S. So if they text love is to this number one eight six six three three one nine four seven four. So love is, and they would text that message. To one eight six six three three one nine four seven four. So 
a lot of your advocates in these hotlines, national hotlines, they are doing what they can because they know that calling may not be the safe option. Oh, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. someone may you know, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, the women have done so many things, Doc, you know, to, to get together. Yeah, yeah this is this phenomenal. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud of both of them, uh, both uh, yes, Sister absolutely. Soldier and, and, and uh, <laughs> Jennifer, you know, for, for your, uh, you know, dedicated service to this country. Both of you served as proud veterans and did uh, so much while wearing that uniform. So I'm really proud of both of you. But this is going beyond and, and showing that, you know, citizen soldiers have a responsibility you know, to be yes. engaged still. Once we retire, take that uniform off, we have to stay engaged in our communities and making sure that we are protecting our citizens. And so I'm really proud of that. And, and I want to I want to um, not uh, leave out the military community yes. because of mm-hmm. the the same situation is happening behind the gates on the bases. Yes. Yes. And so we have to be aware we have to pay attention and we cannot ignore we just cannot ignore signs of our friends of our colleagues Mm -hmm. of our neighbors who are giving us the eye of help we have to really be attentive and not feel like we're more afraid of COVID-19 than to save a life right so I totally agree with you for a friend of mine Mm -hmm. willing to take me in and hide me during this 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 um, time and situation, I wouldn't be here today. So I just want to mm-hmm. encourage anybody who is listening um, and know of someone to really pay attention. And sometimes we can't coerce the individual to right. make that change, but mm-hmm. we can inform them to help them uh, be awakened and have and make um, wise decisions. And so I just want to just kind of add that in there because it's so important for the time that we are living in right now. And, and Absolutely. Know, one of the things I like to talk about all the time, because women have really stepped up, and we all know that, but uh, uh, Sister Soldier, uh, Wanda Perry, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, Wanda Perry, to talk about what she what she's always done. She serves, she... She serves. She matters. Hello? She. W- I'm on the phone. I can't at the moment. I'm doing a radio show. She serves. She matters. I'm sorry. I'm obviously not. That's hotel studio. mates, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The. Um, but you know what she has done. And and then. Some some of these ladies have done some things. For instance, uh, airline air pilots, fighter pilots, or just there's nothing that you can mention that they haven't done, and 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 will continue to do. And I just think that's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and, and yeah, this we, is we uh, appreciate you, Cliff. Yeah, and it's, uh, we appreciate you. It's it's such an opportunity to be supported for allowing us to get our voices out here and to know that we matter. So we really appreciate you for your contribution, your trusting in us, and oh, your yeah. upholding us on your shoulder. I don't take that lightly. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah. You know, and we're, run- we're running short on time now, but I, I wanted to, you know, I think, Cliff, I, I know they need to be coming back here to talk about this subject again because uh, I think this is going to be going on for a bit, the COVID-19. And we have, you know, one of the areas that really is important, too, is talk about the mental health implications and the mental health concerns surrounding this. If, if people have PTSD, other things uh, who are shut yeah. in, that this is really um, making those conditions much worse. But wh- why don't you give us that national hotline number again uh, mm-hmm. and uh, the love is text and uh, we'll get that, um, you know, out there again. Absolutely. Um, the For the National Domestic Violence Hotline, mm-hmm. the, um, I encourage anyone, friend, family, or victim, to call 1-800-799-7233. And then they even have um, a line for those that are deaf. Um, which is one eight hundred seven eight seven 
888-344-3224. But their chat or text line is to text love is l o v e i s to 18663319474 um it's so important to help people get the resources i do have a nonprofit organization unstoppable you ministries we provide emergency services training and supportive resources to those affected by domestic violence, affected by human trafficking, and even homelessness. So we have a page dedicated to resources in many areas to include addiction on our website, and that is www.unstoppableyouministriesinc.org. Um, the last thing I would say, because I know time is short, mm-hmm. is dealing with human trafficking, it is a multi-billion dollar industry that affects over 40.3 million victims worldwide. So again, COVID-19 is not the only pandemic. Uh, Just in New Jersey alone, they saw a 200% increase in online demand for child sex traffickers or victims. And with the mask mandate, it is easier for the traffickers to mm-hmm. uh, hide the children that are the victims. Okay. So it's harder for advocates and rescuers to identify Who they are. the yeah. victims because of the mask mandate. Okay, so we're out of time. 